Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the Cornerstone Builder. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's episode, we are going to have a little bit of fun taking a look at how to build out a mega menu. Now, this is a question that I see come up all of the time and there are plenty of third-party plugins to make this possible, but as you know, Cornerstone's incredible flexibility and modularity lends itself to being able to build nearly anything that you can imagine. So in this case, we have an example of a nice mega menu here where when we hover on these different items, we see additional menus below them. And so we are going to build a version of this ourselves. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here we are in the Cornerstone Builder, and the first thing that we're gonna do is create a new header. So we're gonna come up to the plus sign here and come down to headers here and click Create. With our new header created, just for the sake of housekeeping, let's go ahead and give it a name. We'll call this our Global Nav Mega menu and we'll go ahead and give it an assignment so that as we're working through this we can preview it on the front end of the site so we'll go ahead and add a condition here that condition will be applied to the entire site and because i have a couple of other headers on this site as well i'm just going to give it a super low priority so that it is the one that takes precedence so let's go ahead and give it a negative 100 and save now, I'm going to try to keep things super simple here, but you can obviously take this concept and unpack this further and customize it and tweak it and adapt it for your use cases. So let's go ahead and start from scratch. Starting from scratch gives us a baseline bar up top here in our header, as well as a container inside of that. Now, for our use case, I actually want there to be three containers, but obviously you could adapt this however you see fit. So I'm going to go ahead and add one, two, and three. This one on the left is going to be our logo. We're just going to make this look real, right? So we want a logo in there. So we'll go ahead and put our logo in and we'll just size that logo down. That's looking pretty good. And then maybe we want a button here. So we pop a button on the right hand side here. So this is our call to action. And now we want to build out a navigation in the middle here. Now, traditionally, you would just come in and, you know, grab something like an inline navigation element, drag that out, and that's looking great. I mean, you could absolutely do this and have a menu, but this isn't a mega menu. If we want a true mega menu, we're going to have to build that out piece by piece. So let's go ahead and get rid of our inline menu. And what do we put in this middle container? We want to make sure that we have our proper hierarchy and semantic structure set up for our mega menus. That's one of the trickiest parts. There are some great resources out there in making sure that you are building, etc accessible menus and what that means. And so in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to properly set up a lot of that semantic structure. So you'll notice there's a little bit more housekeeping and preparation that we have to do instead of just dragging elements out onto the screen. So first and foremost, in container two here, we're going to go ahead and add a row element. So let's go ahead and drag that right out here. Now, in our mega menu, we're going to have four items just for the sake of ease and simplicity. So let's go ahead and click on a four column layout. So now here we have our four columns. First and foremost, we want to make sure that this is tagged as a navigation. So we're going to click on our row container, the parent container of the row. And on our HTML tag, this is the outermost tag of our row. We're going to go ahead and set this from div to nav. Now the row element in Cornerstone also has an inner tag. And on our inner tag, we actually want to set this to UL. When you do that, you'll actually notice that everything sort of shifts over a little bit. And that's because by default, there's some inline padding start for unorganized lists. So to kind of show you what's going on here, I'm going to go ahead and just add a background color to our row. Obviously, we won't keep this in the design, but let's go ahead and make the row this blue color here. And then let's go ahead and make our columns this green color here. That way we can kind of see what's happening. And I'll just apply this to all of our columns. So notice there's this inline padding start here, and that is because these are set to UL. You'll notice if I set this inner tag back to div, everything goes back to being the way we kind of want it to be, but we need that tagging. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set this back to UL, and then we're going to dive into the row element itself, go into our element CSS. We're going to target just this row element. So we'll do dollar sign EL. And then because this is a UL that we're styling, we're going to also type in UL. And then we're going to add our curly braces. And inside of that, we're going to say padding inline start zero. And notice right away, our green boxes now fill the space just as we want them to. So now the next thing we need to do to properly structure this is make sure that our columns here are tagged as LIs. So we have UL is the blue parent row. And then LIs are the individual list items inside of that unorganized list. So I'm just going and applying this across the board. So all of my columns are now LI. 
Now that we've done that, we can start building the mega menu itself. So we're going to jump up to our elements here and we're going to grab the standard drop down elements. We'll drag this right out into column one. Now, by default, you're going to see a toggle like this, but we can very easily turn this into a button. So instead of working in the drop down first, we're going to jump over to the toggle tab here. We're going to disable graphic and enable text. We'll come down to our width and we'll set this to auto. We'll come down to our height and we'll set this to auto. We'll scroll a little bit further down to where we have our border radius and go ahead and disable that. And then we're gonna get rid of our box shadow on the toggle item itself. And we'll go ahead and add some text in here. We'll call this our megaphone. And immediately you'll notice things are taking shape. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my background color here as well, but you could obviously customize that as you see fit. Now, like I said, we're not keeping these colors here. This was just for the sake of example. So on our row, let's go ahead and set that back to transparent. And then on our columns, we'll go ahead and set this back to transparent as well. One thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that on the row, we have our vertical alignment set to center. That way everything is in a nice line here. We'll go ahead and inspect column one and then apply that across the board. So now all of our columns should be in line. Now, we're gonna keep working on menu item one here. So now first things first, we need to define this element a little bit before we even worry about the sub menu itself. So let's go ahead and click on this dropdown. We're gonna scroll over to customize and you'll notice that we can add attributes to the dropdown, which is the sub menu or the toggle itself. And we actually wanna add attributes to both. So we're gonna start with the toggle. In the toggle, we're going to add ID, and then in the value, we're going to add some sort of ID that we're associating with this. We'll call this Mega Menu Mega Phone, right? So this is how we identify what this item is. Now, the reason I'm not using the ID field here is because I wanna make sure that I'm associating this with the toggle item itself, not yet with the dropdown. So now also under my toggle, custom attributes, I'm gonna go ahead and also add an ARIA label, and we'll call this Mega Phone. I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll view this on the front end of the site. And you'll notice that when I inspect this megaphone item here in our mega menu, you'll notice that we have aria label equals megaphone. So this is where we just controlled that with a custom attribute. You'll notice that cornerstone handles the heavy lifting of a lot of the other items like aria expanded is false. Aria has pop up equals true role equals button and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and jump back into Cornerstone here and now add some of our other custom attributes. In the drop down custom attribute, we wanna say aria labeled by, and then we wanna use the ID of the toggle. So we're saying that these are associated. So we're gonna say aria is labeled by mega menu megaphone. All right, so now those two are associated. So now one other item that we can add here in the dropdown custom attributes is a role for this dropdown. So we'll type in role and then equals and our value is menu because this is a sub menu item. So with that done, we can go ahead and jump over to our dropdown tab in our workspace here. We can begin working on the sub menu of our mega menu itself. Now there's a couple of things that we are going to do here and I'm gonna to try to show you why we're doing these things. So bear with me here, but let's jump into our elements and just add a random navigation element. Now I'm not gonna worry about styling this just yet. I just wanna show you how this works. So if we leave things in the default manner on the drop down menu and we jump back out to the front end of the website and we refresh, if I start using the tab key on my keyboard, you'll notice that I'm tabbing through items right here. And then after the search menu, I hit tab and it properly selects my first navigation item. Then if I use enter or return on my keyboard, it properly opens up that mega menu item. But now if I hit tab again, it jumps over to my call to action. It didn't actually understand that I should go from megaphone down to my links here before jumping to the next item in the navigation. So how do we solve for that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. If we jump back over to our header builder here and we click on our drop down element, the first thing that we wanna do is make this an inline drop down. Let's go ahead and save. And with that one change, we'll jump back out to the front end and refresh. Now I'm using my tab key again. I get over here and megaphone is selected. I'm gonna hit the enter key on my keyboard and it properly opens up the dropdown. But now when I click on the tab key, it goes through those associated items 
before jumping over to our button as the next item. So it knows that these are in line with each other. And that's a great start. Now we're gonna play with some of these other items here, but I wanna show you this in sort of a sequential order here. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually specify a width for our menu item. And instead of 14 M's, which is gonna be the default on this, we want this to span the full width. So we are going to set this to 100%. Now immediately you'll notice things changed, but they're not looking very good. And that's because we wanna use this inline fixed feature here as well, which allows allows this to fill the space. So let's go ahead and close this out and then give it a test. And that's looking pretty good. It's now spanning the full width of our container. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our inline navigation here while we now work on some of the real elements inside of this. Now to make sure that we can actually see our mega menu item, let's go ahead and give it a minimum height. Uh, maybe this is something like 300 pixels, whatever you see fit for your design. And now when we click on this, there we have our drop down. Now I'm also going to come into our padding here and I'm just going to add something arbitrary like 65 pixels and 65 pixels just to the top and bottom to make sure that when we start designing things that we have a little bit of breathing room. Now, this might work for your design, but I don't love how this dropdown is sort of encroaching on our top bar here. I actually want it to fall underneath that bar. So I'm gonna play around with our dropdown margin. So I'm just gonna make sure the dropdown is selected and then I'm on the dropdown tab in our workspace here. I'm gonna come over to margin and enable margin. And then on the top, I'm just gonna play with this. We'll say uh, 1.5 Ms and we'll see where that puts things. That's looking pretty good there. If I go two, is that too far? Uh, that's, that doesn't look bad either. Let's, let's go ahead and work with that. Now inside of our dropdown, let's go ahead and add some sort of structural container. I'm gonna use a row element, but you could use a grid or whatever works best for your design. So here we have our row element, and I'm gonna make this three columns, but I actually want it to be sort of a four column layout. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna click on the row, we're gonna scroll down to our global container and enable that, and that's looking pretty good there. And then I'm gonna actually set this to a four column layout so that we have sort of a little bit of space over here. We're gonna make sure that column fill grow is set to auto, and that's looking pretty good. So now in column one, let's go ahead and add a headline. And this headline, we might make it an H2 or something of the sort. And we come in here and say, explore megaphones. And then we'd come down here, maybe add just a little bit of opinionated styling to this here. And that's looking pretty good too. So let's go ahead and jump into our elements pane here and we'll type in nav and we want the nav inline element. So we'll go ahead and drop that right in here. Now for the sake of our example, I want to attach this to our sample no dropdowns menu. So that's this one here, but you'll notice this is a horizontal navigation and I need these to be vertical links. So we're gonna scroll down, making sure that we're on the menu tab. We're going to scroll down to Flexbox and set our flex direction from row to column. And immediately you'll notice that these are now vertical links, but they're not really aligned well. So then we jump down to our horizontal alignment and we set this to start. Now things are starting to come together. So let's jump into our top links tab, scroll down a little bit here, and we want to adjust our padding. So we're going to unlink these. We can go ahead and keep top and bottom at 0.75, but we're gonna take right and left down to zero. And that just starts to ensure that we're getting closer to in line with our headline there. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further, we can then disable our text margin here. And now things are looking nice. Let's go ahead and increase the size of our menu items here, maybe like this. And let's just set a little bit of gap here. So I'm actually going to select column one, turn on flex box, make sure that my direction is set to vertical here, column, and then I'm gonna set my gap to one M. And that's looking good. Now we can go ahead and select column one and paste that in column two, paste that in column three, come over to mega menu drop down and copy that to our clipboard, paste that, here, here, and here. Now, what you'd wanna make sure that you change is on each dropdown, we could come into the Customize tab and we'd make sure that our labels are updated. So this one might be Mega Tablet. And then we'd wanna make sure that this was updated to Mega Tablet. And then we'd wanna make sure that this was updated to Mega Tablet. And then we'd also wanna make sure that our text obviously is updated to Mega Tablet as well. You do the same here and the same here. Now, if I go ahead and I save this and I jump out to the front end of our site and I refresh, 
This is looking pretty good, but you'll notice on hover, nothing is happening. I have to click to initiate, and that might be what you want, and so you might be done here. But if you want a hover state on this as well, it's pretty simple. We simply click on our drop down, and right under trigger, we can set this to hover. If we do that, which I've just done on the megaphone one, let's go ahead and do it on the mega tablet one. And then we'll leave the other two the same here. Go over to our front end and refresh. And now if I hover on megaphone, we have our menu and our menu items. If I hover on tablet, we have our menu and our menu items. If I hover over here on our other items, these must be clicked to initiate. So again, you choose what best fits your design. Now, the best part of all of this is now if I use my tab key here, and I get to our first menu item. I can open that up with the enter or return key, and I can tab through all of our items before moving to our next mega menu top level item, which is our mega tablet. I can then select mega tablet, which opened up that menu and work through each of those. I can then do this again on our third menu item, our fourth menu item before moving to our call to action on the right there. And right there, you can see Cornerstone is truly a powerful builder. And now you can take this concept and abstract it out into your own designs. As always, I hope you guys found this video useful and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building.